Grande. Every Sunday, side by side at the microphone, from the green light to the speed trap, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino calls them as they see them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinions, and outright bullshit regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas, but mechanical trickery never before revealed over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrills the explosive tension as Chris and Ray cuss each other down the track and barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disaster as they shake hands for the devil. <laughs> All that and much more this Sunday at high noon on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the Wizards of Speed and Live Feed, Chris Witzer and Ray Garino. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHPC. Take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go ride on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. Sunday! I got it in me. Do you have it in you? Because if you don't, you will, because you've tuned into Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only automotive talk show and dispensary of automotive wizardry with. <laughs> with <laughs> the Dispense. Men- Dispense of what? <laughs> dispensary of automotive wizardry with the. The Farrells behind the curtain, Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. Chris, <laughs> do, do, do I do, do I have to go into the bathroom to dispense my wizardry, or do I do it right here? <laughs> you know what it was? It was really the that black robe and the pointed cap that you're wearing today that made me think of that. Otherwise, ah, thank you. It's, I would have uh, been. Yes, today was Hugh Hefner Day on uh, ah. Motormouth Radio, and, and thankfully no one can see us. It's a, yes. It is, the radio is still not a visual medium, and we're very pleased. That's right. <laughs> but it is a telephonic one, so you can call us at 516-572-7440 for a little while, because we have the pleasure of having Mr. Marty Schultz from Eclipse Sunshades on the show. Yes, yes, looking forward to speaking with him. I want to, want to know how to keep my, my dashboard and my steering wheel cool. <laughs> and I tell you, you know, this has been a topic that we've talked about for years now because I don't remember how I found the product. I might have seen it in a, a magazine or something, and I bought one, and now I have them in most of the family cars. Right. I believe in it. It works. I, you know, we get what we like, and we get what works, and and. That's it. So we'll hear more about that with Marty. But Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to that. But uh, this week, you know what I did this week? I actually worked on a vehicle, Ray. All right. <laughs> oh, what did you do? I, I actually I fixed my radiator finally. Oh, nice. And um, here's something that I, I would like, to, a little important safety tip. Uh, I took the radiator out of the out of the 300 and I put it on a, a, a box that I have, so I was able to reach it like basically knee height. So I just kneeled down and I was able to work in that position. I had to re-solder the lower neck on the car. It was weeping ever so slightly. When I tell you, <laughs> sounds just like it, you. <laughs> yes, when I do this show every week. Yeah, it was it was truly a a dot of antifreeze enough to make you crazy and and i said you know what i gotta pull the whole thing out again i gotta resolder the whole thing again and i did i took it took it out dropped it on the box i got my propane tank and i took the the head of the propane tank the gun basically with the with the valve on the bottom of it and i and i screwed it onto the tank and i lit it but i noticed that when i screwed it onto the tank it seemed a little loose Okay. Going on to the tank. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. That's no big deal. Yeah, no. Nothing could leak no out of there. Deal. Right. Exactly. <laughs> nothing, could leak, nothing could leak out of there, right? <laughs> Go on. So, right. Sounds like you waking up every morning, right? Yeah. No. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. So anyway, I, I take the tank, screw the thing on, and go, oh, that's a little loose. No big deal. Fire it up. I get a nice blue flame out of it. I adjust it. Everything's cool. I go for the radiator to start to melt 
the solder and to get my 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 flow going. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, boom! I have this fireball at the base of the tank. Yeah. Let me see if your hands look okay. So I'm holding on to a flaming torch. Wow. <laughs> and I'm of course you you go for the uh, obvious. I I'm holding on to the tank and I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Spitting on it and blowing on it and just just making it just literally uh just trying my best to get get oh, this to geez. get the uh to get the flame out. So it finally goes out. And then, then, then I go and get the fire extinguisher. Then. <laughs> Should always have one on hand, by the way. Put the fire extinguisher next to me. And um, I took that gun off and I went and tossed that aside. And I put the other nozzle on there. Right. And uh, continued on with uh. nary a problem. And I was able to fix it. But boy, can that wake you up when that goes poof. You know, yes. Especially in a garage. You yes. Know. Especially around gas tanks and other flammable things. Yeah. Yes. Definitely so, uh, uh, harrowing. Uh, that's good. But you, but now no leaks. Everything worked. And yeah, everything you'll know works. to look at that tank a little better, though, with your... You know, with well, I, I'm getting rid of the I'm getting rid of the of the nozzle, the, the okay. brass nozzle. I'm getting rid of that. Okay. I'm going to just toss it away. But uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was a little harrowing there. It scared the yeah, <laughs> scared the poop. Nice. <laughs> and I'm laughing to myself because I'm thinking I am a fairly responsible individual. I like to consider myself a fairly responsible individual. And I just I just sat back down to start working again. I just shook my head. I'm like, sometimes you can just do the the, the god awful stupidest things. Yeah. And and that was just one of those times. And and I always I thank the universe for saving my bacon once again. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, that was the joy that was this week. So I was able to work on a vehicle and actually repair something for the first time in weeks because I have been stuck in this house doing all kinds mm. of clerical work and school work and, and regular work and all kinds of good stuff and trying to be responsible that way. I, I'm glad yours went quick. I, I had a little bit of an opposite uh, thing happen to me yesterday. Oh. I had a, I worked a half a day, and then I was going to go down to the shop to work with Mike on the. You know, we have a car down there. We haven't been able to talk to it because we've had a ton of guests. Right. Uh, there's a car in the shop that everybody says, "Oh my God, is Chris working on that? That's right up his tailpipe. That car is." Um, what? We got in the shop a '64 Caddy Eldorado Burritz convertible. Ooh. Ooh. And it's a restoration project. The fellow had had the car painted years ago. And right. and the rest of it was a part. The engine the engine was rebuilt uh, at the auto parts store by my house by the machinist who I've been right. speaking with about it at length recently. Mm-hmm. The four twenty nine so, yeah. forty motor. Yeah. Yes. So the engine and transmission are in rear end is in and all of that. So now it's a matter of you know getting this thing uh, back on the road. It's been fifteen years since that engine was rebuilt oh. and never fired. Okay. So. You know, I, I've already gone through the gas tank, dropped the tank. It was pristine inside, which was unbelievable for a, a car like that. Yeah, these cars are very, they are really interesting vehicles to work on. Oh, I yeah. always appreciated it, yes. Put a sending unit in it, went through the rear brakes. Um, mm-hmm. Now it's going to be time to get the engine running. And I was, you know, having some trepidation because it hasn't been started yet in 15 years. And I'm afraid of, you know, wiping out that camshaft is what I'm afraid of. So, yeah. uh, so I, I picked up all the oils and, and zinc additives after work. and I was going to run over to the shop to do that. But I said, you know what? I had to help uh, my daughter with a little school project first that she needed a little bit of uh, expertise on. So mm-hmm. did that. And I said, you know what? I just wanted to put the spark plugs in, in my uh, vehicle. So... And they're fairly easy because it's a six cylinder, but it's in, it's a straight, it's in line. It's not a transverse engine, so you don't have to worry about rear rear bank. You have right and left uh, on the uh, on the FJ. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I said, okay, that'll be pretty easy. Let me let me just tackle that and get that done because I didn't have time during the week. That's when the fun started. Oh no! And really, what it was, the passenger side was is wide open once you take the airbox off, but the driver's side. The problem is, is these two metal bra- brackets that come up from the head up to the big airbox unit to brace it. Right. And it's easiest to remove at least the rear one so you can get your hand in there because it's a coil on plug. You have to get the coils off. Got so it. to work in there, that's easy. And I'm finding the problem I'm having is with rusty bolts. 
Now, Ooh, I'm using yes. brand new snap-on sockets, and, and they're, like, slipping. By the time I get to... Uh, I fought with this for quite a while. That's why I never got to the shop to look at the caddy yesterday because it mm. just took up so much of my time. The, um, the bolts are literally just... All the sockets grabbing, they're rounding even with a good socket. The metal is just, you know, when they lost that bit. Yeah. So that yes. was, that's, that's, that's what's up. But I'll tell you something, just a quick observation. This story uh, may come back later. I did find out the stock plugs in the vehicle were Densos. Okay. I found NGK plugs on the passenger side and Densos on the driver's side. Uh-oh. I'm thinking they may have never been changed. And I would say. And it's interesting because I just drove my daughter's Toyota this week. I had to have it down at Tire Town, have some work done and, and alignment done. And I noticed like how much quicker hers just kind of gets up and moves. And granted, it's a four-cylinder, even though it's a four-wheel drive SUV. It is a, it is a four, not the six. Yes. It, it isn't as big as, and clunky, but I just noticed, like, yeah, that thing gets up and moves really nice. And mine is like, move, air. <laughs> it's like a plow, you know? And you can hear the engine working. So it pulls away like a bus. Kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. So now pulling the plugs out, I looked at, I, not only did I look, notice the disparity in brand, but I said, this, these gaps are way too big. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, especially on a, a platinum plug. Yeah, that, the wear makes the gap like you could almost get the side of your hand in it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. They called for um, an 043, 43,000, so a 1.1 millimeter gap. That's, oh, and you have to gap it? You have to gap a platinum plug? Or actually, are they not platinum plugs? No, no. Uh, what did I put in? I put Denso's back in. I may have put whatever. whatever you know, I went to Rock and I bought them like a month or two ago. So whatever they oh, were. But anyway, okay. the, the factory spec on the factory plug was 43,000. So a 1.1 millimeter. Sounds right. And these were obviously wider. I did take yeah. a gapping tool quickly just in one plug. And I have one of those tools. That, it looks like a little, you know, one of the little uh, harmonic, a pitch pipe. That the nose right. used to blow in. You know. <laughs> how many? Pardon me. No, yeah. no, don't say it. Don't say it again. No. Uh, how, did, how, did, how many capping tools did you get in there? Well, the, this thing has them arranged around the outside, and they go from I think like uh, something like maybe probably thirty thousands right. up to eighty. So yes, I so bought it's... that back in the eighties. Well, sixty thousands was too small. Sixty thousands flopped around. It was still wobbling around in there. And eighty wouldn't go in. So <laughs> the gap is somewhere between sixty and eighty, which is a good probably twenty thousands larger than it should be. <laughs> yes. I said, okay. Sure. So I'm already thinking, well, someone changed the passenger side because they're easy. You know, and sure. they didn't change the driver's side because they're harder to do and they left them in. Right, and they exactly. maybe rated it 100,000, you know. So, well, let me tell you something. Done with the job, get in there, fire it up, starts right up. New cars are amazing because no matter how bad the parts are, like we, like we say all the time, they'll run till they die. They, yes. don't, they don't give you that little cough or churtle or like, let you think, oh, I got to go do a tune-up. No. They, yep. they, and, and the vehicle ran great. It was smooth. Idle was nice and smooth. No issues. Well, I said, let me take a quick test drive. Let me go and do my drive. This thing probably lit up like a Christmas tree, right? I put it in drive and went to take off, and it just moved. I was like, oh, look at this. Yes. Throttle response. I said, you know what? And I, I drove it today and said, yeah, I could feel a definite difference. And Oh, I believe it. So now I'm going to watch. Of course, I'll watch the gas mileage. I'm hoping to pick up a little bit there. But So like I told my wife today, I said, it really just speaks to the point of just doing regular maintenance. You know, whether you think you need it or not, change the air filter, change the cabin yep. filter, change the spark plugs, uh, keep air in your tires to the, to the correct pressure, you know, do your transmission service, and, and you'll have a happy day. And, you know. Oh, yeah. Like I'm I said, a firm the, believer of it. the yes. cars don't let you know like they used to know. Like that caddy, if that thing had a bad plug or the points weren't were you'd close, know it. you'd know it, you know, yeah. not with a modern mm -hmm. vehicle. No, no, no. That's no way. for sure. I did the same thing on that Mazda, the uh, the uh, CX nine. It has a three point seven V six, and uh, the I know the plugs were original, but after seventy two, seventy four thousand miles, actually it was less than that. I think it was probably sixty sixty nine because I don't think I hit seventy. But after that mileage, I I pulled the plugs. I said, let me just, and it, it's an ordeal to get at them. So, and it's like you say, it's it's coil on and all that good stuff. So I went to go pull the plugs. And uh, they were, like you said, the gap was really large. 
huh? there were platinum plugs in the car, and I didn't have to gap them. I just threw in the new huh. set. And boy, did that thing wake up. Holy you know smokes. What? We were on the road. I I mean, after a while, my wife is just like saying, oh, be quiet, shut up. Or, yeah. you know how, how good it runs. All right. All right. Fantastic. We're going we're to wake up and go to the phones. Oh, good. We'll go to the phones and go to the phone and say, hi, you're out with the motor mouths. Hey, guys. Al from Albertson. How you boys doing today? What's up, Al? Hey, what's up, Al? How are you? Oh, pretty good. I got to hear you what you were just talking about. Uh, in my Mad Max replica, I probably switched to the uh, V3 Diamond Fire plugs. Uh huh. Yeah. You don't have to gap them. It's that big diamond opening. You just drop them in. It was like putting a new engine in the car. Yeah, you can't. You can't <laughs> gap those. And actually, I'll tell you something. Al Bosch had a plug just like that that they put in Porsches and Audis back in the eighties. It was a a three conductor plug. So yeah. yeah, it's probably what, where where these other companies all got the idea from. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, probably. I've what you talk what's... about changing plug problems. Years back, I had a uh, '88 Firebird Formula 350. Mm -hmm. To change the yeah. spark plugs on the passenger side, you'd have to jack it up, take the front wheel off. <laughs> and get a long extension and go in through the fender well to get the middle two plugs. You know, Pontiac. What, what was it? What was it? A 350 in, in that? Or yeah, a Formula 350. Pontiacs in general were known for that. They were yeah. uh, they were kind of known for that. And some of the other, a lot of the cars were too. Some of the Buicks, but Pontiacs were always known for that with the the, the Firebird, that F body line across the across the board. Yeah, right. tough stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. why. In, all, in the like four years I owned the car, I never changed the spark plugs on that side. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it, yeah. <laughs> and the other problem was with with that body, that like Knight Rider style body style. Mm -hmm. The engine was set so far back. Yes. That whenever it was parked outside in the rain, the water would run from the windshield down into the engine compartment, right into the distributor. Hmm. Oh, uh, and did you? So have I you had to get a marine distributor cover like for a boat to cover the distributor cap so no water would get in. <laughs> have you ever looked at an F body from the 90s when they went to the uh, even the LT1 cars the Camaros the engines were set back behind that cowl first I looked at one of the dealers because I was going to buy yeah. one instead of the Impala and I said Oh, you! What do you? How do you get the the rear plugs? Like through the inter, you know, through the in interior of the car, <laughs> through through the uh, glove compartment. Yeah. And I and I'm looking at said, how do you get a head off of this engine? Like you know, how do you do anything? How do you, you know? Wow! And I found out later on that what they do is that you drop the engine and cradle down. You drop that whole mm -hmm. subframe and then then you got access. And that's how they do it. So you know, almost crazy. like almost like an early Mopar. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, with the K-frame. Yeah. yeah. Like the early, the early the early charges, the whole engine it all came down in one. Well, on the K frame, right? You could do yeah. that. Yeah. Right, right. So. Sure. Yeah. If you had the if you had the lift, yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Not the, something the you can do in your driveway. Do right. Right. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you not, could if you were crazy enough, but <laughs> yeah, you had enough yeah. cement blocks and hope the thing didn't come off and crush you to death. Right. 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 Exactly. If you were daring enough, you could do it. But no. Well, even I remember back to describe. my very first car. I Got from a, from my mother's friend's daughter when she was going off to college it was an old Ford Pinto, a seventy two. <laughs> little for, originally it had a little four cylinder in it, right? With the overhead cam. The cam went, and we're looking at how the hell we he couldn't get the head off. We cut a hole in the firewall and took the cam out through the, through the interior. Wow! <laughs> I don't think that's the right procedure. But, <laughs> no, but then to make it even better. Oh, he, my he uncle it gets at better? the time had a Maverick Grabber. If you remember the yes. Maverick Grabber with the V8, yeah, sure, three hundred two. He got T-boned with it. Before I went to the junkyard, we took the motor and tranny out of it, dropped it in my Pinto. I had a V8 Pinto, <laughs> and the cool car when I was a senior that year. Everybody wanted the Z28. That was the hot car for the for the rich kids to have. Sure. I was blowing them away with a Pinto. They couldn't understand it until I opened the hood and there's a 302 four barrel in there. Sure. How the hell do it? And they're like, how the hell did you get that in there? Yeah. And I'll use a bigger shoehorn and a bigger hammer. That's it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's great to hear you guys again, man. Good to be able to call you guys again. It's good. Are you great to be back in the studio? Yes, absolutely. Feels good after feeling like you were in prison for a year, right? I just wish I had my co-host with me in the studio, but that, that'd be the only yes. thing that would make it better. But, yeah, we're yes. enjoying it. You're not together in the studio yet? No. No. Oh, no. stop living I, in fear. 
We're not. We're, we're living not. in different we're states. <laughs> Al, we're not living in fear. We're living in different states. Are yes. oh, you in different states? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I guess everybody is fleeing New York now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just fleed before it was right. fashionable. You were smart. You were ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Al. Thanks for the call. That's why uh, the, the smart speakers are a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Just say, play whatever station you want to hear, no matter where you are. You could be in Alaska and listen to you guys. There you go. And sure. if you're, All right, if you guys. Do, you have a good day now. And if your smart speaker's listening, play CBS FM. All right, Al. Thanks. <laughs> All righty. Thanks, see ya. Al. Right, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, let's see if Alexa <laughs> plays with that one for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 516-572-7440 is the phone number to get a hold of us right here for a little bit of yeah. time because we'll be talking to Marty Schultz, the president of Eclipse Sunshades, very right. soon. Yes. Like I was going to say, with your Mazda, when, when I yeah. uh, the Mazda that I was driving, I think it was a one year when we were going up to Syracuse, and I said, you know, what? I was going through the car doing some service. I said, eh, you know, they called for a hundred thousand mile plug change, and that mm -hmm. was a four cylinder, very easy to work. And I said, you know what? I'm changing them now at like fifty four thousand or whatever it was. Yeah, why not? And why I not? and they were, they were iridium plugs in that car. Took them wow. out. They looked just and at fifty four. They didn't even look like they were hardly used at all. You know, right? And then I changed them again at uh, just about a hundred. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. You, I felt no difference, saw no changes, but I said to myself, you know what? Again, that's, that's a good thing because if you do feel a difference or a change in a newer car, something bad is happening. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I agree. I totally agree. I did the same thing with that Galant, that Mitsu Galant I had way yeah. back in the early 2000s. And around 60,000 miles, I just changed the plugs. And, right. it, and it's a, it's not easy. You got to pull the top of the motor off, you know, the intake, basically. Right. You have to get that. That was the first time I ever had to pull an intake to get, uh, to get at the plugs. Sure. And, and it was, they came out, they look great. They yeah. look like they could do another 60,000 miles. And, and you said, like, what am I doing? Why did I do all this work for? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's true. Yeah. It's true. But it's like you say, you just it's the general maintenance. And you know what? And this is something that I, I, I hate to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. It, I think it has saved us money to to do the job, to do the maintenance, because I've had across the board, I'm not pointing at one vehicle in particular, but across the board, they've all been pretty good. Yes. Yes. I think so, all of us could say that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I really do think it is due to the maintenance. Because I know you and I have always talked about this. How many times have you started to do particular maintenance and then you see something else that's wrong? Oh, yeah. And you see something else that's probably going to cost you money in the long run. And you see something else that needs attention. And you have to take care of that, too. I know we talked about it even with my Chrysler. I think I was getting under the car and I found like four different things wrong because it all leaked on me. Right. Well, in the beginning, you will, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, so uh, yeah, I, I do feel that uh, it has a lot to do with it. I'll it tell you what I found wrong. This is something that our goody fr good friend Billy Velvet had brought up to me a while ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were talking about different type of tools, and he goes, Ray, you know what we need is, and I thought of it yesterday, a tool tether. Because, a tool tether? You know, you know, like working on a truck, a truckish platform, when something falls, you can't reach down to grab it because it's too oh. deep. <laughs> <laughs> and everything, well, I got under that damn thing yesterday and took out half of the, the, the freaking skid plate pan because my, my 12 millimeter socket was nestled on top of it. The screwdriver I dropped got lost because has a black handle. I did find it nestled right by the front drive shaft, so luckily I found that. But I'm like, you know, just just a quick aside. I was at the chiropractor's office yesterday and I was doing, what the heck was I doing? Oh, I know, I brought a scraper to change the, the, the doctor's... Uh, a registration sticker on his car. So <laughs> very nice, very nice. I, of you. I'm kind of his maintenance guy too. Yeah, he fixes my back. <laughs> I fix his car. So yeah, you know, it's one of those fold out scrapers, and and I had the blade in the wrong way, so I had to take it out and turn it around. And of course, right. and there's another woman. There's a woman sitting there and across from me. And of course, as I'm doing that, the blade falls. Yeah, so I pick it up, and then the little screw falls, and then then the hold the thing falls. So she she says, "Oh boy!" I said, "You know what?" I said, "I actually have a, a saying about this." I said, "Usually when I'm working on stuff, I, I'll say, you know, I should just take everything and throw it on the floor because I'm going <laughs> to end up there anyway. I might as well work down there." <laughs> and she just looked at me, was like, 
What a nut! <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't see you didn't see the honor group of the hour this this uh, uh, week, huh, have you? No, and Dougie will be well, you know Doug. Actually, last week I, I spoke to Dougie from UD, and he said he didn't fit last week's group. He goes, yeah, it was kind of odd. It was one of those odd odd days. He goes, what was and this? Was like Monday. I'm talking to him. He goes, yeah, what what was the honor group? I'm like. I don't know. <laughs> you think I remember from yesterday? I'm I don't like, know. I got, I got it around here somewhere. I, I was know. hoping you would. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it wasn't the fill, wasn't the car filling the car? Was it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, don't the, oh, it was it the eight track tape player? I don't. Oh, remember. maybe it was eight track. Yeah. Could've so been, we'll, we'll see if Dougie been. fits today. But hey, you know, speaking <laughs> of that, we were talking about car shows, and and again, just a, a quick notice. Coming back again is the uh, Long Island Cars, Car Show and Swap Meet. This cool. is going off at um, uh, Bald Hill. They have a couple of dates. They have Bald Hill, Flower Fields, and North Hempstead, North Hempstead Beach Park. Uh, mm-hmm. You would want to check. They don't have the date on here, though. That's the only funny thing. Uh, you'd want to check at LI Car Show at, uh, well, at, at uh, that, .com. They should have all the stuff up there. Uh, I'm sorry, LongIslandCars.com will have all the dates. But they're back in effect. And the Long Island Street Rod Association, that's uh, Vic's group, they're going to be a car show and swap meet out at the Suffolk Community College Brentwood campus. The spring meet is April 25th. They have vendor right. spots, car and drivers, the fair, LISRA.com if you want to check it out. So, Man, I can I can tell you, this is going to be some year when it comes down to car shows yeah. because people are jonesing. Oh, heck yeah. To get out there, to go and, and, and swap some parts and show show some cars. And you know what's kind of nice? We've had a whole entire year to prepare our vehicles, right? Because you couldn't go anywhere. So what did you do? You fixed your car. You did you did improvements. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing what people have done in this, this 2020 year of sleep, basically. Yeah. I'd love to see what what uh, what what's new and exciting out there now, and what people have have done when they were bored. Mine got painted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing that's ever happened in in mine or the cause uh, the cause life. So, right. So, people that haven't seen your GTO yeah. maybe in 2018 are going to come back and see a whole brand new car, which is astonishing. But now, before I take it out, I have to change my axle seals because I do have a leaky. I found a leaky axle seal. Ooh. So well, when I pull the brake drum, so yeah, I got to get in there and pull the axles and, and change those things. Right. So okay, you gonna do that? You gonna do that on the gentleman way, or you gonna do that in your garage? I'll probably do it at home. Yeah, why not? Oh wow, it's not that really? bad. Just jack the car up. It's just a matter of you know, just drain the, drain the rear end fluid. Uh, I still have seat clips in that rear, so I'll release the seat clips, pull the axles out, you know, mm-hmm. one at a time, and then just uh, you know, with a seal, everything is new. The, the rear end was rebuilt, so it's not like it's. Uh, rusty or stuck for a hundred years so yeah seal pull a tool you get it in you wedge it pop the seal out use a seal installer just tap it in <laughs> wait how do you pop- <laughs> just like that you pop it out <laughs> that's it and then there'll always be an errant splash of 90 weight that's behind the lip of the seal that just flips out and, and hits you either like on your chest or in your lap but you know you kind of expect that yeah. You've you've uh, uh, tasted ninety weight before. Yes. Huh? We've, we've talked about this. You got it in your hair. Too. Hey, <laughs> speaking of that, yeah, I was going to change the fluid. The owner wanted the fluid changed on that caddy. Well, that sixty four caddy, since it has a a live rear end, has a fill plug on the rear, but no drain. Yes. Oh, because and I didn't even sure? realize this. It's a pumpkin style rear end. The whole pumpkin section bolts in front like a Ford. From the front side of the rear with about oh, 10 bolts. Oh, really? Yeah. There's nothing on the bottom? I didn't see anything on the bottom. I'll look again. Oh, I didn't see anything wow. at first glance, no. Do you know, it's funny because I was going to ask you about it because this it's the same style in the 300. And I know we, you and I talked about I got a, a rear... Uh, a rear seal, real main seal uh, in the rear end that's leaking, and you had said put put um, Marvel Mystery Oil in there, mix it up with the with the gear oil, which right. made it leak even more. So right. I have to get the fluid out, and just before I get it fixed, before I get it repaired, I just wanted to put new gear oil in it, and I noticed the same thing in the Chrysler. There's no. There's a fill plug at the top. There's no fill plug at the bottom. A lot of times, so what, it, it's on the side of the uh, of the trans of the uh, rear end. No, I didn't see yeah. it. Right, right, right. It is? Okay. Uh, many I'll times, yeah. Many times, it's on the side. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a look, but I don't so, remember seeing it. But, but I will take your word for it. Uh, yeah, you got to get under there. 
Well, I tell you what, we're going to see. We're going to take a, we're going to take our bottom of the hour break, and then we'll be back. We're going to talk with Mr. Marty Schultz from Eclipse Sunshades. Cool. So, do we have the under group of the hour? Of course we do, Ray. What do you familiar, got? As familiar as this may sound, the Motormouth, Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour this week, if you had to deal with a spring clip, if you have ever had to send a spring clip crank handle across the garage, and of course you have something to say about it, or if you ever got pinched by a flexible hose spring clip, or if you've ever dropped a carburetor clip into the depths of the intake manifold, or worse, down one of the barrels, or if you had to pop the spring spring clip in your rear end, you know, that'll hurt. So if you've ever watched it as it flew away and you listened intently as it landed, then you're part of the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. There you go. Boy, that ha- yeah, that's when you need the tool tethers, I'll tell you. That's right. That's what happened. Yeah. So you need your tool tether. All right, and your parts tether. <laughs> all right, very good. And then we all fit into that group. So sure uh, let's take our break. We'll be back with Marty Schultz for Chris Switzer, Ray Guarino. Let's rock on down the highway and try and find uh, where Marty is hanging out. And we'll be back in a few on Motormouth Radio 90.3 WHPC. <laughs> show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop you want to have your car fixed at. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services, 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. And yes, say habla espanol. More information is available by calling 516 516- 593-0920 or visiting online at celebritychasecollision.com Shake off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 5 for two hours of Revelations. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities. An occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 5 on Revelations, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll be back with answers to your car questions. Give us a call at 516-572-7440. Oh, I should have said more than that. All right, you're back. Motormouth Radio, Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer, and we are awaiting calls for a call from our guest, and we'll talk to Marty and talk all about this great product that they sell. And and we have the phone ringing, so let us Ooh. do that. Yeah, let's do this. We'll pick up the phone, say hi, you're all the motor mouths. Oh, hey guys, this is Marty Schulte. Hey, Marty, how are you? Fine, how are you Hiya, doing? Hey, Marty. Excellent. Hey. Yeah, we're doing very well. We're doing very well. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Right. Well, thanks for having me on. I, I always like being on and uh, chatting with you guys. Yes. Well, you know, we we um, we we talked about this uh, a couple of years ago. We had you on in the summer, and we talked about how the Eclipse Sunshade is such a great thing to have in the summer and, and all the benefits. And you had mentioned, you know, it's not a bad thing to use in the winter too. So Ooh. our hope was to get you back on in the winter and and do a uh, you know follow up on that. So. I have no problem with it. I use them in like all of my cars, so I think it's good to have. I, I put them in my house if I could put them on my home. <laughs> <house. laughs> yeah, we get a lot of people who say the same thing. And really? Okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't work as well. You're better off just getting your plain mini blinds. But um, you're not the first person who said that. Who said that before? Okay. So if you could, Marty, because a lot of people, um, I'm sure there's people who don't know what we're talking about. But if they, mm-hmm. they, what they should do is follow. Either go to EclipseSunshades.net and look at your website, uh, or also follow you on on Twitter or Instagram. As with us, 
We're Motormouth Radio on the web, on Twitter, and on Facebook. And on Instagram, we're real underscore Motormouth Radio. And I just posted a picture of my latest installation on the Toyota. So uh, yeah, I'll throw it to you. Tell us about right, that. Right, right. Well, for, so first of all, what the uh, the Eclipse sunshade is, is uh, for those who don't know, it's a windshield sunshade. So everyone knows in the summertime, um, you know, you, you see the, the fold-out uh, silver sunshades in, in the front windows of of cars and trucks. Ours is is that, but it's much different. Um, the thing that sets our shade apart is that it's uh, a customized fit shade, so it's fit for your window, but more importantly, it's actually mounted inside the vehicle. So the shade is mounted uh, to the driver and passenger side of the window, and it, it's a retractable design, so you uh, just pull it towards the center where it's secured. Um, it takes a second to use. Uh, it's, it's always there when you need it. You know, the biggest biggest problem with some of these other shades that most people are familiar with is the fact that you've got to put it up, take it down. The fit is never right. It's never there when you need it. Um, and we kind of solve all of those problems. Um, so like I said, it's, it's, it's always there when you need it. When you're not using it, you don't even know it's there. And in terms of the summer, I think the, the benefits are pretty obvious. It helps keep the, the sun out, uh, protects the dash, keeps the car cooler. But as you were saying, in the winter, there are a few you know, practical applications uh, that you can use it for. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm from Chicago where it gets very cold. And what I've realized a few years ago is that if I were you know, warming up my car in the morning, um, if I close the shade and just crank the defrost, it really helps to accelerate it. Oh, um, yeah. So just just the basic design, you know, it, it, when you close it, there's a little bit of space just by the vents on the, the, the front of the dash where the defrost comes out. Um, if you just start cranking it up, it kind of provides a barrier between the, the, the windshield and the shade, and it just really helps to accelerate that. So it's not the uh, primary purpose of the shade, but it's a nice benefit for the uh, off-season. Yeah, I have to remember that, because like I said, I use them in, in all the cars, and I, I've never thought to even try that. I will say, though, from all the years that I've been using it, I, I, couldn't, I don't remember when I first, or where I first found the product. Uh, it was probably an advertisement in a magazine article, I think, but... Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I know people have been in my car and say, what the heck is that? They, they think it's like maybe a speaker bar or, you know, uh, <laughs> deionized. Like, no one knows. And I say, watch this. And I reach over and grab them. And, and people's face still, they don't understand what it is. They look and say, what? I'm like, yeah, it's a sunshade. I'm like, you know. Chris? But Marty, Marty, Ray does this on the highway at 60 miles oh, an hour. Oh, hell yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got yeah, yeah. to tell him to not do this anymore. Yeah. You've got to live a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Marty, I gotta ask you, how is how is it to install? Do you need major tools to install something like this, or is it no? No play? tools are necessary at all. So you know the way it works is, like I said, the shade comes in two halves. One goes on the driver's mm-hmm. side, and one goes on the passenger side. And we use uh, four small mounting clips, so two per side. And these mounting clips are affixed with a uh, a very strong adhesive. It's a um, a three M you know VHB adhesive that just doesn't go anywhere once it's on the window. Oh. So so it's it's meant you know it's a temperature resistant adhesive and it's also meant to withstand you know constantly pulling the shade back and forth over number of years. Um, so once these small clips are on the windshield, the shade just snaps in. So you know if you've never done it before, you can usually get it done in about fifteen minutes. I've I've done it quite a few times. It takes me maybe five five ten minutes tops. So no tools are required. You know everything you need is is included, and it's a pretty straightforward application. I, I think I've actually gotten to the point of being of in, in store, installer status because the directions tell you to, to, to mount the brackets separately. And I, I just mounted them on the shade and just just put the whole thing up in one shot. I'm like you know what, this is how we're doing it. <laughs> it's like, Absolutely, and it works That's the best like a way to do it. And I will say that VHT that that um, that VHB uh, adhesive is a killer because. I um, recently I'm selling my my one car and I took the shade out of it. I'm going to repurpose it into another car and I took the brackets off the windshield and that was not easy. I was afraid I was going to break the windshield. <laughs> yeah, no, so. it's it's it. You know, once they're on, it's not going anywhere. And I think you know something we've done over the years is we've really put a lot of effort and time into making sure we get quality products and product quality components that go into the shade. 
So um, we're pretty meticulous about about that sort of thing. Right. We've gone through a few different adhesives over time until we settled on this one, which we found was the best. And you know, the same is, is with our the fabric, the plastics, just really every component. We've really done a lot to make sure we're delivering a uh, a quality product that does the job and is going to last for a long time. Mm. The question I have is, where can I find that VHB stuff so I can add, just put it on the other bracket so I can reinstall it? <laughs> well, you, you know, Am- I think Amazon you can oh. find it there from time to time. Cool. And I will say, um, you know, I reached out to you it was over a year or so the oldest one i have is in my 96 impala so i think i bought it in like around 1996 and i noticed that subsequently the ones i put in in the other cars in the family were a stiffer um more rigid type of a uh, a fabric it looks like chris it looks like well you've seen it you know it looks like a, a venetian blind just ver- uh, yeah. on its side and uh, we did swap that out marty swapped that out for me a couple of years ago uh the one in the impala was a lot softer and it just kind of flopped it didn't have its it didn't hold the uh, the shape as well so i know you have changed your materials over the years and, and this new one that i just installed is very robust it's mm-hmm. uh, you know very strong which is great it's Fantastic. Yeah, no, the new fabric, the newer, I mean, newer at this point, uh, fabric is, you know, we've been using it for nearly a decade now, um, you know, about 10, about eight or 10 years. And, and it just works really well. It's very strong. It's crisp. You know, when you're opening yeah. and closing the shade, the pleats stay, you know, keep, keep their form. So it's, um, we found, we, we kind of had to start using it for a number of reasons, and um, once we did, we were really pleased with how it performed for those reasons. Just nice reflectivity, nice retraction. Yeah. So, And I will say the most important thing is I, I did do temperature tests on my own car. I used a, <laughs> uh, you know, a thermocouple, and I measured the temperature of the dash and the steering wheel in the sun without it and then the you know the uh, again i then i deployed it and after some time passed and, and more time passed and i saw a 20 degree uh, drop in temperature you know mm-hmm. i mean that's significant in the interior wow yeah yeah no that's absolutely significant and that's that's what we've found over the years is you know anywhere from 15 to 20 yeah. um sometimes a little more uh mm-hmm. temperature did, uh reduction and some people may think well 15 to 20 degrees doesn't sound you know like a whole lot especially considering how hot the inside of a car can get yeah. mm-hmm. but it's the, just the barrier between you know the window and the inside with the shade just that barrier preventing the sun from getting in just makes a world of difference it's like a cloudy day if there's a if it's a hot day but it's cloudy it's much more bearable than if it's blazing sun and maybe not as hot yeah. and, right. and anybody who's grabbed a hot steering wheel knows like that's not mm-hmm. fun to do you know no so uh, no, definitely not. And just for the fact that it saves the condition of the top of your dashboard, and it oh. saves the condition of your steering wheel. And in, in this in this day and age, I mean, dashboard the tops of dashboards incorporate so much technology. Mm-hmm. You have airbags in there, and that's all you need is your dash to crack because the sun hitting it. And this this product seems to alleviate that problem or really decrease it significantly. And that's really cool. Yeah. I, I, yeah, absolutely. It's just it's a, it's kind of a whole. Um, we, we like to think we have a lot of solutions in one. You know, not yeah. only does it just keep the sun out, but but we do things like help the dash. You know, the dash is a huge part of it. It's not just like I said, keeping it cooler, but it's preserving um, the interior and the, the dash. So. And, and I have mm-hmm. to say, I think for like newer cars, seem to have better dash compositions. They they do. But if you mm-hmm. go back to the older cars, like cars even in the nineties. They were a lot more fragile, and uh, they seem to fall apart in 80s cars. So if you have an older car, I highly recommend it because those dashes are just, you know, they're, they're, not, as, they're not the same stuff that new ones are made out of. Um, right. No, absolutely. And I think, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, you know, the timelines for everything, but I know a lot of the, um, you know, newer windshields, there's a lot of UV filters and, and things like that that help, um, you know, prevent the intensity of the sun from, from affecting the inside of the vehicle. But, right. you know, like you said, a lot of the older vehicles just don't have that. So, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people in Arizona where you're in the middle of the desert and you have an older vehicle, um, they really enjoy our product. It really works well for yeah. them. <laughs> uh, you know, it had me thinking yesterday, and like I said, I've, I've been using this product since the mid-90s, so I see it like every day that I drive, no matter what car I'm in. But I looked at it yesterday and said, whose idea was it, to co- the, the idea for the retractor? Because, there's, of course, there's two black uh, oval pods on each shade that I guess that's where the, uh, the, the cords or whatever retract into. And I said, mm-hmm. that's the genius. That's part of the big genius behind this product is that retraction of the, the mechanism. And it makes me want to take one apart. 
<laughs> you know, to see what's in there. Because that's me. I like to see how things are, are made. You know. That show, This yeah. Is How It's Made, that's one of my favorites. You know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy it too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's fu- it's funny, Marty, because I've seen Ray get into his car and and literally just th- throw the throw the shades back and and effortlessly. It, yeah. it takes seconds to, and I've seen Ray do it effortlessly. You know, it's it's almost like a, a ballet move. He just jumps <laughs> in with him, just opens him up, and and right. he's ready to go. And so it's impressive yeah. to see how it how it operates. Yeah, it really is. In the beginning, the Velcro in the middle is very it's kind of tight, but as it wears a little bit and gets a little bit, you know, uh, gets a little set to it, it becomes easier to separate it. And then mm-hmm. you can you can do that. Sometimes use like a tearing motion where you start at the top and kind of, you know, you don't want to tr- try and do it all at once. But yeah, Marty, yeah could, you know, what? sometimes something we recommend for that, you know, just specifically is uh, the Velcro is so strong that you really only need to secure it around the middle of the sunshade as well. Um, <laughs> it's great to do it from top to bottom if you want, but right because it's so strong, sure. you, you know, that's all you really need to do. So yeah. Marty, what kind of uh, what kind of vehicles do you uh, do you provide the sunshade for? Uh, like, is, uh, I know there's there's such a wide range of windshield sizes. Uh, what do you cover? We have everything. Whatever. You know, there's only one vehicle that I've ever encountered. I've been doing this for you know 17 years now, and there's only one vehicle we've ever encountered that that we just weren't able to make a shade for. Um, so, you know, as far as which vehicles we have them for, we have them for anything that's on the road. Um, you know, some of our most popular vehicles um, are just, you know, your standard sedans, your Toyotas mm-hmm. or your Hondas, but also pickups. They're great in pickup trucks. They get just a really nice fit. Um, you know, a lot of the pickups are out on the, the road maybe more or in, used in situations where they really benefit from this. So it's great for trucks. Um, something else that's really become popular over the mo- over recent years are uh the smaller RVs, um, oh. so the ones that are built on the Sprinter chassis or yeah. the Pro Masters or or those. I, I mean, these things are are a dream for that. Uh, right, right. So you know, it's, it, because once you start using them in something like that, you're using it to protect from the sun, but you're also using it for privacy. Sure. So. Uh, wow. That's something, you know, it's become much, much more popular in recent years, I think. And uh, we've found that people really do uh, like the shades for that. But, you know, the shades are custom fit. They're custom fit for any vehicle. We have them available in one-inch increments. Uh, so you're going to get, you know, a, a fit within one inch. Um, and there are a number of different cutouts for the mirrors. You know, many of the newer vehicles have all sorts of uh, cameras or electronics in the mirror with you know, a box near the mirror itself. So we accommodate those by having a number of different cutouts that allow you to close the shade around it. So regardless of the size of the sensor by the mirror or the size of your windshield, we're going to have something that's going to give you a nice a nice fit. Yeah. Yeah, that's I will say, cool. you know, I've got them in foreign cars, American cars, mm-hmm. you know, trucks, and, and every single one has been just, just a dream. And they really, and, and, you know, people have said, oh, but, you know, now it's in your line of sight. It's a, I said, listen, you drive with this thing for a couple of days a week, you don't even know it's there. Mm-hmm. You really mm-hmm. don't even see that it's there. It's that, you know, I, I really forget about it. Like, it just becomes part of, you know, just, just part of your view. I mean, the profile, when you're not using it, it's no more than an inch and a half or so. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Thick. So I just think of it in terms of adding an additional inch and a half to the to the the windshield post, mm-hmm. the the pillars. Right. Yeah, I'm looking at your pictures here on EclipseSunshades.net, and it, and you see it, it opened in a standard windshield. It looks like an Audi, and it mm-hmm. looks fine. You could you could see right. There's no problems. I don't see any any uh, disturbance or any blocking or anything like that. It looks perfectly fine with the with the shades open. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so yeah, I oh, can yeah. I can totally see that. That's for sure. I, yeah, and you know the thing that I always hit back on with this is that. Mm. Other than the obvious fact that this is a sunshade, the best, the, the the biggest benefit of this is its convenience in all aspects. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, the opening and closing. And if you think of a standard sunshade, it takes you, you know, to take it off, it'll take maybe ten seconds or fifteen seconds on a good time, and then you got to throw it in the back seat. But this thing right. literally takes one second, and. It may not seem like a big time difference, but it really is uh, just just effortless. You know, I no, say, it's true. You know, Chris mm-hmm. at the at the shop, Mike uh, Mike Junior had seen it, and and he asked me about it because he knew about it. He said he wanted to put one in his Mustang convertible. 
Uh, so I told him where to go, and, and he did buy one. And then now the other guy, Nick, has a new Mustang, and he says, hey, that, that thing that Mike bought, that, that he bought one too. He says, where'd you get it? I'm like, I told him where to go, <laughs> clipsunshades.net, and, and he bought one too. So The thing, the thing there. The, the smart thing. guys who see it will ask about it, and then they too have actually purchased these, uh, these products. So, uh, But yes, Marty, I, I truly think if you were to have a display video or a, an operational video, you should have Ray do it. Yeah. <laughs> I could go from Ray's a very good salesman for us. I could just line up my cars and go from car to car to car to car. To car. <laughs> we could even get a stopwatch going too to time it oh, for, for, for added dramatic effect. Great! <laughs> Make a whole contest out of it. It would be awesome. That's right. So, Marty, besides the website, how do you market and distribute? Do you do uh, like what are the what are their areas? Uh, are, you, are these in stores any place? Because I haven't yeah, seen them. Yeah, they're in a number of stores, oh, cool. um, mainly in the southwest and, and the western part of the U.S. and in Florida as well. Um, our biggest source is, is, the web, is our website. So, uh, you know, we do a lot of the direct, the direct sales to people. Uh, right. and we do some, some online marketing as well. Um, but, you know, the, we've had some, some changes in the business over the past few years, and, and that's one thing that we're we're – looking to do and we've really wanted been focusing on i think last year kind of took everyone by surprise so uh, we're moving a little slower than than we would have liked to but uh you know this is the sort of product that once somebody sees it they love it um and once they use it they absolutely love it so the more people that know about this i think the more the more popular it'll be and that's always been our our perspective so Uh, and i tell you something our mac our friend mac man brian in maryland was just asking me about that. He says, you know what, I should, uh, I know how much you like it. He goes, I should get one of these for my tool truck, again, for privacy and, uh, you know, for a secure issue. And I said, you know what, yeah, I'll send you the information. So I will, uh, I'll be, I'll be yeah. sending, sending Brian that info. So uh, that's a perfect, we'll, we'll get you into the Maryland, we'll get you into the, into the crab cake uh, <laughs> capital of the world. Perfect. We would, we'd love that, and we hope to be. We we hope to have a lot more exposure out there in the coming coming years as well. Just in the the, the northeast and the in the east coast. So there's one area where we really don't have the coverage where we'd like to. So that's a big goal for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. We'll keep putting you on the radio and and sharing you on our platforms. And uh, with the pictures and the info and all, so we'll do what we can to to increase it. Because, like I said, we we've always been firm believers in we like to uh, stand behind things that we use and we like and things yes. that work. And in this case, I, I I can't find anything bad to say about the product whatsoever. So, yeah. well, we really appreciate that. I'm glad it, it just. It means a lot to us to hear that from 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 customers and people who know the product, and it's it's just uh, it means we're doing something right when we hear that. So we we love to hear it. Is there anything mm-hmm. in the works down the down the pike in the future for Eclipse Sunshade? Do you have anything in the in development, or are you just sticking with the plan, sticking with what just, works? Just just sticking with what works right now. Like I said, you know, last year threw yeah. everyone for a loop, so we're just kind yeah. of moving right. moving onward and upward, and uh, we want to really. Push our push this product to to the max right now. It's, uh, you know, look, I'm looking for an more eclipse. people need to know about it, and that's and that's what we're working to do. Right, I'm looking for an eclipse side shade now. Oh, <laughs> it's right, side I'm, windows. The side windows, yes, different. Yeah, that'd be a little tough. <laughs> yeah, because they windows, are they <laughs> move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I just the biggest problem with the side window shade is once it's on there, you can't roll your window down right. based off how it's <laughs> currently being used. So. I did just think of something. Though. I've never been to the Detroit Auto Show or the Autorama, but I could just see on the floor at the Autorama a, a, a segment or segments of cars with the Eclipse sunshade deployed. I think mm-hmm. that'd be a perfect place. Ooh, to advertise yeah. that product. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know we did SEMA, um, not oh. obviously not last year, but the previous year. Okay. Um, and we, we were able to develop, we, we had a nice windshield. We got a windshield and a, a setup where we were able to have a shade just on the vehicle, on, on the window right there for people to use. And that was a, a, a big hit as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you would want them to, you would want a, a potential customer to, Use it. Try and yes. uh, try to alleviate whatever fears that they have inside. Just have them say, "Look, just try out, try the product." And believe me, I, I like I said, I'm I'm a believer as well. Just to watch Ray use his, yeah, is mm-hmm. has been is has been a real eye opener for me as well. Mm-hmm. I, I will yeah. tell you, well, I, I'm glad to hear that. It's a, you know, it's it's easy, and once people see it, they just they're they're usually sold. I will say yes. the only thing that I could see could be a detraction on an installation would be if the person approached the windshield with the with the bracket and just and put it in the wrong place because once it's stuck, 
It's oh, stuck. So that's the only thing I could say could be a problem. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah. listen, I, I've done it. If I can do it, pff, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can do it. It's not that hard. It really is. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it is straightforward. Yes, absolutely. Yes, very much so. Very much so. So it's Eclipse Sunshades.net. And, uh, right. Is there- are right, you, you can get, right. You can reach us at eclipsesunshades.net, and when you're mm-hmm. typing that in, make sure you put the S at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, it's eclipsesunshades.net. Uh, right. You can also find us, like Ray said, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at the Eclipse Sunshades, um, and that's really your best source for information. Um, you can order online. We have a lot of information there, um, and you know we'd love to offer a uh, discount to any listeners who who might who might be thinking about a sunshade as well. So, oh, nice. You can you can get a ten percent discount by entering Motormouth ten. So the word Motormouth and the number ten, all is one word, in the coupon code field as you're completing uh, your order process. Excellent. Well, thank Very you. Very cool. Morning. Yeah, we thank hope you. to uh, we we hope to uh, to help you out with that because, like I said, we we do love to. Talk about and, and, and push, not, not push, but recommend the things that we use and recommend because we know, you know, we know what they can do and, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we also like to tell people what to stay away from if we have to. So. <laughs> yeah, we've no, we're known for that too. The, yeah. Some <laughs> problems we avoid, having, but not this one. This is definitely a home run. Right. Well, I'm glad you guys like it. Like I said, it really means a lot to us. It means we're, it means we're doing something right when, when we hear something like this. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, well, you can be you can be sure that we will be back in touch. I have your your contact information. We'll be Perfect. in touch again, and we'll uh, we'll keep you in our rotation so that we keep the listeners apprised of this great product, and uh, hopefully, you know, get the word out there a little more. So, great, great. Well, like I said, we always appreciate. It. I always love coming on and chatting with you guys, and and we'll look forward to it doing it again next time. Absolutely. All right, Marty. Well, well, thanks again for having me on, guys, and have a uh, great Sunday. Thanks, Marty. Thanks All right, thank you too. Care. All right, be safe. So Bye-bye. long. Bye. All right, Mr. Marty Schulte from EclipseSunshades.net. And again, you could go on our, on any of our social media platforms and see the recent installation I did on my own car. And it was took a lot shorter than it took me to put those plugs in. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm sure it did. <laughs> Only because of the freaking rusty bolts, not because of the plugs themselves. But um, Right, and you didn't have to deal with any rusty bolts I, within the Clip Sunshade. I do think I have maybe more of a calibrated elbow now, Chris, like you've talked about. About in the past, I Come was on. putting the plugs in, and I said, "You know what? Do they get torqued to." You know how I love to torque stuff in. Yes, I and, know you do, but I don't. <laughs> I know. So the owner's manual did not have the information, just the plug type and whatever, and the gap. Right. And I right. have an online. I have a service manual which also didn't show the torque specification, which I was surprised at. Okay. And I was going to wing it. I said, "Okay, it's a, it's a gasketed plug and an aluminum head. It's probably around twenty foot pounds." And then I'll call that. Yeah. I, pu- I put them all in and I tightened them with a, with a short, you know, regular size 3 8 ratchet. And I felt the gasket crush. Yeah. And then I went about a quarter turn and said, okay, stop. I like it. And then when I was cleaning up, I picked up the box. And on the back of the box, it had the torque specs right on oh. the back. Of the- well, uh. 18 to 21 foot pounds. So I went and got my torque wrench because I hadn't put the coils in yet. And, right. I, and each one gave me another about, you know, eighth, not even a quarter turn. So... I was right You're there. The ballpark. Yeah. Right there. Very cool. That and you know it when you go that's about 20. When you go ah, that's about 40. The when big, you go ah, that's about 60. Yeah, the big thing is you have to feel the uh, you have to feel the crush. All right, yes. so anyway, we're uh, we're going to get out of here. Kim is in. Stay tuned for Thunder Road, the best of Bruce Springsteen. And uh, I know our, our listeners love Kim's show, so do that. Chris, yes. we'll be back next week with a guest yet to be decided if we have one or not. And until then, what do you always say? Don't follow us home and always feel the crush. Right. So until then, <laughs> we'll see you next week on Motor Mouth Radio. For Chris Witzel, Ray Guarino, see you then. Bye. See you, bye.